Hello, this is dad's gaming addiction, dad's cooking addiction, review while in cook mode. <laughs> Hello. You don't do it right. All right, well, too bad. What are you doing for us today? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we are going to attempt to cook with these new cookware materials. Today we are making a very simple meal. I am not trained in any way. Self-taught. Oh my god. First, make sure you remove the lids. <laughs> Okay, that's good to know in case somebody forgets. People could pour vegetables on top of the lid and well, what did I do? What happened? So it's very important that you remove the lids first. All right, so this is a very simple meal. We are using Giant Eagle California style blend broccoli and cauliflower. Nothing fancy, it costs a dollar, two dollars, whatever. Giant Eagle is inflated, so we are going to just simply open it. Let's see the chef, the chef at work. And pour it into this saucepan here. Whatever you don't use, make sure you wrap up tightly and put back in the freezer. <laughs> freezer. <laughs> Next, a little bit of water. Don't drown it. A little bit. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. Wait. Okay, a little bit of water. Okay. A little bit. I see. Okay, a little bit. <laughs> With this being covered, the water will evaporate into steam. So the water will stay in here. You don't need to drown it. We turn this on and we let it cook. Next, we are using Success Boil in a Bag Jasmine Rice. Much stickier than your average rice, and I like it that way. If you like Chinese takeout with the sticky rice, this is as close as you're going to get in my experience. So, you take the bag of rice, it's rocket science. You put it in here, you come over here, you boom, bam, done. Fill it up. But you gotta watch though. If this runs out of water, then this bag is gonna stick to your pot and you're gonna have rice and plastic everywhere. Make sure this remains soaked. Soaked! Keep it soaked. Keep your eye on it. Don't be afraid to drown this one. You can always pour out the water later. Empty boxes, trash can. Oh, Next. Oh my gosh. He just chucked it. Chicken. This is Sam's Club brand chicken that you can get for $1.98 a pound. It's amazing. Uh, we just did a Purdue chicken review, and even with the sale, it came out to be $4.44 a pound. This is half that. Um, and supposedly there's no, it's vegetarian fed, no added hormones. Whether or not you trust that is up to you. But we're going to go ahead and put that no seasoning? Not right now. <laughs> seasoning later. Oh, I like marinating mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you don't want to, you don't want to crowd the chicken, but yeah. for the sake, yeah, we'll have to put that later. <laughs> okay, so three pieces ought to do it. Make sure you don't crowd it. Make sure that they are relatively thawed so that they cook evenly. If you end up with chicken that is half frozen, then the middle is going to cook slower than the rest and you're gonna end up with a burnt outside, which may be what you want, and a cold inside, meaning you have to cook them longer. Um, you can use water to prevent things from burning on the outside. Um, I personally am uh, sensitive to a lot of different foods, so I typically just use water. You could use um, olive oil, but make sure that you read the specifications of your pots and pans. I believe that certain oils and the like will actually uh, cause damage to the pan. So you have to read the directions that come with it. But anyway, a little bit of water, not a lot, a little bit. 
And this is just to prevent a little bit of sticking. Now these are non-stick. I've never used these before. So this is an experiment on my end. So we're just gonna let this cook for a little bit. Um, I do I do like to cover this up. What's the temperature? High? It's on high. Okay. This stove has different settings. Uh, this is a simmer burner back here. This is a quick boil. This is a power burner and this is a regular one. <laughs> um, I don't know if we really need to cover the rice. I'll go ahead and do that anyway. Just... We're going to let the steam come out of here so that the, the water does drain. We're going to try and keep the water in so that it boils nice. Um, there is no air for the steam mm. to come out, so we may see juggling, but there's not a whole lot of water in here. So, yeah, I think we'll be good. We just have to let this sit for a little bit. Eventually, um, we're going to start hearing some really hard sizzling, meaning that, you know, you're starting to burn the underside of the chicken. At that point, you can add a little bit more water, make a little bit of sauce. That's what I do. I make a sauce out of the burnt chicken bits, and it's a nice little glaze on the outside of your chicken. Of course, you can flip it over over time. Don't forget to set your timer if you're the kind of person that doesn't like to cook and likes to stay out of the kitchen. If you don't have a timer, you could start a fire. So make sure that you have some kind of timer. 30 minutes might be a bit generous. We'll do 15. And there we go. So we'll check back in a little bit and see how these things are doing. If you happen to give your pets love in between, make sure you wash your hands. All right. So we're about seven to 10 minutes into the cooking process and we've done a couple of things here. First, we've given the dog some food. You may hear her chewing. Next, um, the water was starting to boil over and up over top into the stove. So that's the sign where we want to reduce the fire a bit so that doesn't happen. Um, so now, as you can see, the rice is blowed up in there. It's for the most part ready to go. I'm just gonna let it low heat simmer it's fine vegetables same deal for the most part looks pretty good there's a little bit of water in there it's not going to stick to the bottom we may want to stir a little bit let's go ahead and use a clean spoon clean spoon clean spoon just to just so nothing sticks to the bottom but there if you look in there You'll see sufficient water on the bottom to where nothing is actually sticking. It's nice and fluffy, and there you go. Last but not least, we're starting to smell a little bit of burning from here, and that's okay. I, I like the burning. It turns into a nice sauce. One thing I don't like with this particular product is that these handles are actually quite hot now. So we're going to need... The rubber thing is right there. The rubber thing's fine. I was looking for a cloth or a... Oh. I mean, these will work. You can actually hear the sizzling there. Note, we have the lid on, so the, the water was actually keeping this nice and cooked too. The, the heat was, we're, we're sort of spreading the heat. With this lid off, the bottom would cook and this would not receive as much attention, in my opinion. So by keeping this on, we're sort of, like in an oven, we're sort of keeping the heat trapped in here, cooking the entire thing across. We're just gonna temporarily put the lid there, add a little bit of water, a little bit. That is sauce that we're making. And we put the lid back on. And we may have to do this several times until the chicken is cooked, but we are sort of making a sauce right now. Um, and we can even, if we wanted to, marinate a little bit. We can take our spoon and just sort of take the sauce, sort of marinate the top. Uh, we're going to need more water if we're going to do that, but you get the idea. We can easily just marinate it here. So now we've got a little chicken, burnt chicken sauce. And we'll be doing that regularly, sort of like basting it. So again, we're going to wait until this sizzles. We're going to add a little bit more water. Uh, we're going to sort of spoon the brown, yucky, whatever it looks like, uh, <laughs> chicken burnt stuff onto the chicken. It, it'll taste good, trust me. All right. Starting to hear a little bit of sizzling here. We're going to, safety first, take the lid off. Hear that sizzle? Look at it. Look at it. And we're actually going to add a little bit of water before we flip it. Woo look at that, okay. Nice. All right, we're gonna just, oh, look at that underside. 
Look at the underside. It's so easy to flip. Nothing stuck. Non-stick pan. Look at this. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> you should use a fork. I could use a fork, but look, that's how I'm demonstrating the right. ease of flipping. Yeah. Look okay. at this. Non-stick. All right, so we've got a little bit of, again, burnt bottom there, but some people like that. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more water. It's already running out. there done that first there we go <laughs> so now the sauce is now marinating the top of that that I just flipped over so if you look at the underside you can see the the it's it's really juicy past all that that burnt skin there but it's it trust me it'll come out great mm -mm -mm. all right so the next thing we want to do is check our temperature make sure that we're not overcooking it We're going to add a little bit of water while we do this. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Now we're going to use our little temperature dagger, as I like to call it. You're looking for above 165. Right now that says 158. And you want to stab it in a couple of places too. Uh, it's 162 there. Let's just keep going with it. Uh, 153, that's going to be hot because it's the outside. You want to check the middle mostly. The middle is where it's going to be the coldest. Uh, that's actually 184, so this one is for the most part done. Just want to stab it in a couple of places. This is actually 147. We should keep this in here a little bit longer. 138, 130. Oh, this one needs some more time to cook for sure. But it's going to be nice and juicy. This water that we're doing, let's go ahead and add a little bit more water. Keep it nice and covered. That way it doesn't dry out. And that's hot. <laughs> all right, with the lid on, we're keeping the moisture in, soaking up all them juices. At this point in time, um, if you have no plans to add any more water after this, go ahead and start seasoning. All right, so I think we're almost done here. Let's go ahead and recheck these temperatures. Now keep in mind, your chicken will continue to cook for a short period of time after it's done, uh, if it's just resting here in the pot. So even if it's like 164, 163, it's not a game changer. It's, it's use your best judgment. So we've got 158, 160, it's, it's 162, it's taking some time to actually get an accurate read there. 163, all right, that looks good. Uh, this one here is 176. We're looking good there. So I think that one's sufficiently cooked. Uh, 168, 170. All right. So we're just going to continue checking temperatures as we need to. Uh, 194 over there. That's crazy. Uh, 171, 173. Okay. So I think we're I think we're pretty good. We don't want to overcook them and dry them out. But that's the whole purpose of adding water, which I'm going to do real quick right now. We're going to turn this off and we'll marinate just a little bit. If you have cooking gloves or some sort of, you know, things to protect your hands while you do this, go ahead. We're just sort of marinating the top of the chicken here with the chicken sauce that we're making. It's not a whole lot, but we're just adding a little bit of, but there should be some trapped moisture in there too, which is good. All right, so let's go ahead and check on our vegetables and rice, make sure everything's good here. Again, hot stuff. I would, I, I wish that these, uh, I wish that these handles had some kind of protection on them, but you just gotta watch. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off and put that somewhere safe, maybe up there. And yeah, you can see the rice is actually puffed up in that bag, um, so that's done. And just be careful of water whenever you take this off. Condensation uh, may have built up around the edges. Uh, so water may fly everywhere, so just be aware of that, so gently lift the lid. And yeah, we still, we're good there. Okay, let's go and just mix it up, make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom. There's a little bit of sticking, and if that ever happens, you can add a little bit of water, and that'll quickly unstick it. Just a little bit. Give it a nice mix. There, it's already not, yeah. All those little bits that were kind of sticking to the bottom there, starting to come up. Yeah, not bad. All right, 
So this is the finished product. Um, again, this was a very simple meal, none, nothing grandiose, nothing Gordon Ramsay would uh, give a thumbs up at. But um, when you've got IBS and other digestive disorders, simple is usually best. Um, so at this point in time, you can add a little bit of seasoning if you want. Uh, my girlfriend likes her adobo. <laughs> I just simply like my salt. Uh, pepper is known to irritate the stomach, so be wary of that. Garlic also may irritate. Uh, it's up to the individual, really. But anyway, my review and how these cook and how these handle, I love the fact, let's go ahead and try and flip these. Yep, these flip just fine. Uh, in the other pans that I was using before, they would there would be bits of chicken stuck to the pan. And here, that's not happening. That's awesome. There's no sticking here. That's awesome. And there was a little bit of sticking there, but very minor. And we're going to go ahead and turn all of these off. And now we let it rest for about, I want to say, 10 minutes or so. And then after that, we serve. All right, let's go ahead and start putting stuff. I, I like to use a bowl for portion control purposes, but uh, you do you. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just take this piece of chicken here. You can actually see the inside and how well it cooked. If you see a little bit of pink there, then you know it's not done yet. You need to keep, keep at it, but look at that. Nice color on the skin there, but the inside looks nice and juicy. There's actually water dripping it from right now, uh, water dripping from it right now down the scissors. People are like, whoa, you're using scissors? Why are you using scissors? Anyway, uh, so we've got that in the bowl. We're going to cut the rice open. Again, anyone can do this. Anyone can do this. We're just going to go ahead and pour some of that rice in there. Beautiful. And we are going to take some of these veggies in here. Broccoli, cauliflower. Um, not as uh, solid as, I mean, because I use a lot of water, a little bit of water in there. So it looks a little bit more like mush, <laughs> but that's because I had the lid on. I was keeping the moisture in, but these should be nice and tender. Uh, that's the whole point. If you have stomach issues, you want tender food so that you don't have a lot of work in digesting the food. So, yeah, I mean, once we actually use a fork and, and get it up, yep, there, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, so there we go. So we got some rice, got a nice piece of chicken in there, which we'll go ahead and cut up. But yeah, we got chicken, rice, vegetables. There's a meal for you. And look, all this is left over. So honestly, um, am I happy with this product? Um, yes and no. I'm happy with the fact that this stuff is not sticking. That's great. Um, what I don't like is that the top of these lids, um, they're still hot after the fact. I mean, it's actually burning my skin right now. So um, I wish there were rubber handles. Uh, some, some frying pans and some pots have rubber handle tops so that whenever you touch them, they don't burn uh, your hands. These don't have that. So if you do buy this set from Sam's Club, it's member's mark, just be sure that um, you use some kind of rubber glove or um, a, a towel, anything, so you don't burn yourself. Um, I do like these. These lids have large holes and small holes, so it can vent uh, the moisture from the inside of the pot should you want to do that. But there you go. Do I recommend this? Uh, yes, I do. Um, reason being, again, you're getting semi-good quality stuff here. Uh, there's a 15-piece set for about $120, $530. Um, the downside, uh, like I said, to buying really expensive stuff is that, well, no one has that kind of money unless you're a professional cook and have tons of money to throw around. Um, you'll find pans out there that are 30, 40 bucks a pop. Um, I was looking at uh, the hex based, those hex, hex potware, whatever on Facebook, and it was 600, $700 for a complete set. And yeah, it might be quality. It might be stuff you might see on Hell's Kitchen, but who can afford a six, $700 set of cookware. So for 125, 130 bucks, you're getting a good deal here, I think. Um, so far it's, it's been, you know, 
pretty well cooked here and, and all the food has been, um, well, it's nice and juicy too and I like the lids, but again, I don't like the, the lack of the handles and the, the rubber. So yeah, um, do I like this? Yes, I do. Um, but like I said, I think the main issue here is the, the hotness of this particular handle. There needs to be some kind of covering here, some kind of covering here. I think that's the big takeaway. Um, and again, it's an affordable, affordable uh, set of, I would say, moderate quality cookware, if I had to say. But again, this is our first time using it. Uh, the real test is going to be whether or not it holds up over time. So I may amend my review as appropriate. Well, this is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.